This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over the Mishner et al. impingement testing cluster. I'm excited to bring you guys these videos because finally it brings together all of the special test videos as we would actually use them in clinic. I'm going to have my friend Alyssa come out. She's going to help me demonstrate this testing cluster. Now the Mishner et al. cluster uses the NEAR test, the Hawkins-Kennedy test, something that looks like the Infraspinatus test, which is basically an external rotation strength test. We're going to do the empty can test, and then we're going to do the painful arc test. If she gets a positive on three or more of these tests, that's a good indication that she has impingement syndrome, all right? That's a stronger diagnosis for impingement syndrome than any one of those tests alone. All right, so let's go ahead and go through these tests. So near, I'm gonna take her into internal rotation, all the way through all the flexion she has in the scapular plane. Notice I'm stabilizing her, her scapula so she doesn't go into a bunch of elevation. At her end range, I'm gonna give her a little overpressure and ask her, is that hurt? No. Is that your symptoms? Nope. nope. No pain. That's not the symptom she was talking about. All right, so that's negative. Next, we're going to go through the Hawkins Kennedy. So this hand goes in the same position. I want to keep that scapula from going into upward rotation because this is a shoulder test. And then I can use my palm to stabilize her torso so I don't push her off the table. I'm going to go ahead and take that lumbrical grip over her elbow. 90 degrees of horizontal adduction, 90 degrees of flexion. And I'm going to twist. How does that feel? That hurts. That hurts a little bit. Okay, so we have a positive Hawkins Kennedy. Now we're gonna do that external rotation test. Now this is one I demonstrate. I don't want I don't want her to try and use her deltoid to push out against me, so I'm gonna just I want you to turn your arm so that you're pushing out with like more like your wrist. Okay? Alright, All right, go ahead and push out. And she's strong. It's all those big muscles she's got. All right, so she's nice and strong there, so that's negative for that test. Next, we're gonna do the empty can test. So she's gonna start in, in abduction this way. I want you to go ahead and resist me. I'm gonna kinda note how strong she is in this position, and she is super strong. All right, I can do a push up from this position. All right, and then I'm gonna have her turn her thumbs down, and I'm gonna put her in the scapular plane, which is 30 degrees of horizontal abduction. I'm gonna have her go ahead and try to resist again. And notice she has any marked weakness in this position or this provokes her symptoms or pain on the symptomatic side. So once again, we're negative for this test. And then the last test you're gonna do, go ahead and stand up, is the painful arc test. So what I want you to do is I need you to tell me when the pain starts, when it's at its worst, and when it goes away as you slowly move your arm all the way up as high as you can. I want you to go sideways with it though, like this. Okay, ready, go. No pain. No pain? No pain. Still no pain. Okay, so we have no pain on the painful arc test. That's a negative to that test. You can go ahead and sit down. So we had negative to everything but the Hawkins Kennedy. So pretty good indication that you don't have impingement syndrome. Or if you do have some start of impingement syndrome because of the Hawkins-Kennedy thing, it's not very bad. Right? The idea behind these testing clusters is that would be strong diagnostic cr criteria that we need to look for something else that is causing her problems. Now, let's set up a little patient scenario and test your acting skills. Ready? Great. All right, we're going to say Alyssa is a swimmer which I'm not even sure if you are a swimmer, but if you are, great. Uh, Alyssa's a swimmer, and three months ago, she started having a little pain while she was swimming. It progressively got worse, and now you're seeing me because you notice that even when she tries to like push open a heavy door, she gets anterior shoulder pain. So we have that kind of chronic onset. She can't remember a single instance that hurt her shoulder. It's just been getting progressively worse over time. So we have a pretty good subjective uh, analysis that leads us to believe that impingement syndrome might be your problem. So we're going to do this Mishner et al. cluster. You ready? Ready. We're going to do it again. You got the scenario in your head? Got it. All right. So first, first thing we're going to do is the near test, internal rotation, stabilize the scapula, all the way through all available flexion in the scapular plane, a little bit of overpressure. How do you feel? No pain. No pain? No pain. Okay. So she has no pain there. Next, I'm going to take her into Hawkins-Kennedy. And you guys saw that she was positive before this, so 
Yeah. This is definitely That's positive. So is this the si the symptoms you feel when you're swimming? It is. Okay. Good. Let's try the external rotation test here. So she's going to go ahead and push out. Good. How about that? That hurts a little bit. That hurts hard, a little bit. All right. So, so far we have positives on the Hawkins Kennedy. We have positive on the external rotation test for pain. And even I notice like she's a little weak here and you guys will see that a lot with people who have pain in this position is it's not it's not that they can't push out against you they won't be able to maintain and if we were to compare sides this side would probably be a little weaker all right the next test that we're going to do is the empty can test so i'm going to have you go ahead and pull out like this all right i'm going to note her strength in this position good she's a little weak in that position but let's compare it to this one all right good and she's even weaker in this position. How does this feel? That's hard. hard to it feels really it. hard. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. All right, so we have a positive empty can test. We even noticed she was a little weak in the full can test there. And then go ahead and stand up for me. All right. Now, once again, with this painful arc test, I need you to tell me when the pain starts, when it's at its absolute worst, and then when it starts to go away as you take your arm all the way through your total range of motion out to the side here. It's starting right now. This is the worst. And then it's gone. Okay. Okay, good. Go ahead and sit. All right, so we now have positives for the Hawkins Kennedy, the external rotator strength test. We have a positive for the empty can test, and we have a positive for the painful arc test. Four out of five on the Mishner et al. cluster is more than three out of five, so I would say you're positive for impingement syndrome. Now just like the Park et al. cluster we talked about in an earlier video, despite the fact that these clusters are better diagnostic tools than any one of these tests, in fact I've talked in some of the other videos where I explain each one of these tests, some of these tests are pretty bad individually. Even though they're better together, the diagnosis of impingement is a fairly poor indicator of what we should do with our intervention and it's not a very good indicator of prognosis. So although this is going to add to your hypothesis and you might be able to be a little bit more secure in saying that it's impingement syndrome, using these testing clusters, make sure that you follow up this testing with perhaps other clusters to rule out some things like rotator cuff tears or labral tears. We want to make sure that there's not some other little something that's contributing to your pain. And then we're going to have to follow this up with a movement assessment, something like the overhead squat, goniometry, manual muscle testing, something that's going to give us an indication of interventions that we can do to improve her movement and hopefully improve her symptoms over time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will write down these testing clusters, start using them. If I were you, I would put it in some sort of Excel spreadsheet or make a table and make some templates for yourself so that you can start just checking boxes and get this into your memory. I think if you guys start using them on a regular basis, whether it be the Park et al., which we use here, or the Missioner et al. cluster, it doesn't take very long to get very efficient at using these tests in combination and it really doesn't take that much more time than using one test alone. I'll talk with you guys soon.